What's up, guys? I am the new owner of a 1997 LX450. So, this is essentially a Toyota Land Cruiser. Um, most people still consider these 80 series Land Cruisers with Lexus badging. You know, Lexus and Toyota come off the same assembly line out of Japan. Um, and this particular vehicle was only manufactured 96 and 97. So there's only two years where it was produced um, out of that 80 series line. So it's a little bit more rare than the Toyotas. And the Toyota 80 series ran from 1991 to 1997 so a lot more years for it to be produced um, runs a FZJ80 engine which was predecessed predecessed by the FJ80 I got the seat out um, common problem on these is for the seat to go out um, so I've got it here I'm working on replacing some of the gears and everything about a 30, 30 minute to an hour project. Um, and we'll be back in action because unfortunately it died from the previous owner in a position that is too short for me. Um, but yeah, let's pop the hood. Take a look at the engine bay. Yeah, this thing was absolutely identical to the Toyotas, except for this here, bottle paneling, some of the premium interior. It's kind of hard to see in this light, but kind of a more beige leather um, and kind of fake wood paneling. This one is super clean. I think the front seats were reupholstered. I'll attach some videos here in a second uh, with some better light. And the back seats were like basically never used by the previous owner and the one owner who had it before the guy I bought it from. So yeah, um, all over this vehicle, it says Toyota. So that's kind of why in the Land Cruiser community, there, this particular model is kind of considered a Land Cruiser. So, Super clean engine, um, it's running well. I don't have any lights on it. I drove it from Austin, Texas to Waxahachie, Texas, which is a good two and a half, three hour drive. No lights came on. There are a couple things that I'll have to like investigate to try to address. Um, this car has 154,000 miles on it when I bought it. And that's crazy low for a 1997. I was born in 1995, so this car is almost as old as I am. But I can tell the timing belts on them are getting to a point where I'll need to replace them. I don't wanna be driving down the road and one of these break on me. So those are coming in the mail from Amazon, pretty cheap part. Uh, that'll be my next project actually, after getting the seats replaced, or excuse me, Excuse me, <clears throat> the uh, the gears working on the seat so I can get it to a right position. Uh, fortunately, this one has an oil leak down here, barely enough to drip onto the floor over like a 12 to 15 hour period. So it's not too bad. Um, when I got some better light, I'll send some more I'll attach some more footage of the underside. This is a truck that has been in the Austin area. Um, first owner had it for 20 years. Second owner had it for about a year. And then the guy before me who had it, had it for about seven months. He had another project he wanted to work on. So um, absolutely no rust on this thing, which is what you're looking for in this. Um, everything works on it. 
for the most part. Um, just a little couple of cosmetic things that we're gonna work on, but my favorite part, I think, of this whole vehicle is the original phone. I mean, can you imagine being in the car and being able to call and talk to your friends? That's just crazy. Um, car had original first aid kit, Lexus. I'm sure everything in there is expired, but this is from 1997. That's cool. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I wanted to get this vehicle, um, cause I wanted something a little more rugged, a little more reliable. I'd been reading online that basically these things were extremely easy to work on. Now parts aren't exactly the best. Being such an old vehicle, it's not super easy to get them, but these engines are kind of considered to be like a, uh, a tractor engine. So super simple, but it's a tank and it'll last. Toyota built all of the Land Cruisers all the Lexus LX450s in Japan, the same assembly line. Um, yeah, I mean, look, we got a Lexus logo here. And Toyota here. So, I mean, this thing's a Toyota, but it's, it's for the ballers back in 1997. A lot more ballers had the Lexus and then a lot more off-road or rugged, rugged drivers were having the Land Cruisers, so I've read. So a lot of the Lexus tend to be in better shape. Um, but I'm super pumped about this thing. Yeah, I just wanted something that would be super reliable, um, pretty simple to work on. This engine, this FZJ80, I'm sorry. Yeah, FZJ80 is made to go 500,000 miles. And that's with proper maintenance, which I, unfortunately the guy before me didn't have a ton of records. Um, but the owner before him was the owner of Yoda Ranch, which is a big, um, a big shop down in Austin area that works almost solely on land cruisers and forerunners. So the guy knew what he was doing. So I was confident with that, even though the guy before me didn't have a bunch of maintenance records. Um, uh, I was thinking that the guy before him being an owner of Yona Ranch would would have at least kind of close to baseline this thing, made it a little reliable. So I was confident in that. But yeah, we got lots of lots of plans. And you can tell how old this windshield is because it kind of has that goldish tint to it. Here's something we got on the way home from Austin that we get to either touch up well, yeah, we'll touch it up, say flight it or something uh, for now. And um, one of the last steps for this vehicle is to like paint it. The clear coat is all coming off on it. So, I mean, this thing is, I got it so I could run it. Not so I could be a baller. Um, so in a year or two, once like I've absolutely baselined it, gotten everything I want to be able to overland in this thing, kind of camp and take off road pretty much anywhere. Um, then I'll start working on cosmetics like this, windshield, complete replacement, stuff like this. Um, but yeah, this truck right here was the last truck that Toyota was making with a mighty solid front axle. Uh, again, bad lighting, but solid front axle. Not a lot of vehicles like that are made nowadays. That what, that's what makes these kind of so sought after. Um, super easy to put a lift on, got the sway bar, but it just allows basically, you know, one wheel is dipping down into the ground. It'll flex really good on this other side. These things will just absolutely run circles around a lot of other vehicles that are made today. Um, but basically, this is the most modern Toyota off-roader that you could get with a solid front axle. So that's why people like them. That's why I wanted one.
But yeah, I have little to no maintenance background or experience. Um, but I have YouTube and I have willpower and the desire to get this thing up and running so that I can make lots of memories with my family. So that's what I'm after. Um, anyways, yeah, stay tuned for some more stuff. Um, I don't have any experience with YouTubing or anything like that, but I thought I would document the journey with this vehicle because I know one day I'll be able to look back and just be like, kind of think how crazy it is, how far it came. So I'm excited for that. Um, got a lot in store. But yeah, I got to get back to this seat. So y'all take care. All right. So it was about two hours. I know I said 30 minutes to an hour, but between going from YouTube and back, it took me two hours. Um, I could probably do it again off just memory alone a lot quicker the second time, but that was the first time getting familiarized with it. But I got the flash on now, so here's a good idea of what the actual interior looks like. Very old school, very 90s. This is aftermarket here. Um, unfortunately, no triple lockers, but there is locking center differential when you put it in low. And we get a light indicator right here for that. But I just got the seat in, so I wanna test it out and see if it works. And it doesn't. So I must have misassembled something. But there is a mechanical way to move this. Um, it's just really difficult. So hopefully I got it back in a decent position. Um, much more comfortable, hopefully, than putting my knees to my chest, which I was doing before. Here's the back. Like I said, leather's insane. Like these are just kind of natural wrinkles, no cracking or anything in any of the leather, which is very rare with these 25 year old cars. All the ceiling looks great. No stains or drooping or anything. All looks good. Sunroof, um, which does work, it doesn't leak. It's very common for it to leak, but this one doesn't. I don't intend to use it because I don't want to get that leak. One of the best parts about these Land Cruisers, and they still do it on the 200 series today. I don't know about the 300 series, but those aren't available in the US yet. Okay. So you got the top hatch. And the tailgate right here. This is like the best part. So when you're camping or whatever, set your grill on here or whatever, sit down, tailgate, actually tailgate, hang out. Two drop down seats. They just hook right up there. No flop down. But yeah, overall, pretty dang good condition. <laughs> kind of upset about the seat, but I'll take a look at it later. Um, yeah, here's a better interior look at it. Oh, do the underside a little bit since I was bragging on the no rust. All right, be prepared. There's an oil leak that I have to investigate next. Um, yeah, man, this thing is clean. I need to power wash it. Absolutely no rust. This thing's got another 25 years in it if I treat it right. Yep. Something's seeping there. And we'll take a look later. Could be anything. All right. Appreciate it, guys. I'll take care.